Welcome to worship on this cloudy day. It's, it's not going to rain. Hopefully. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Um, I know we were, we were planning to be uh, inside in the sanctuary today, so I thank you for your flexibility. Uh, hopefully the percent positive rate will dip down below 5%. That's our threshold for resuming um, worship in the sanctuary. Uh, so we'll keep you, on Thursday is when the, de the determination is made where worship will be. Um, but going forward, we will be having in-person church every week. So every Sunday at 1030, we'll be having church here, either out here in the parking lot or in the sanctuary. So I hope to see you all next Sunday as well. Um, other announcements? Um, I think that's all. If you have any questions about any of that, you can talk to me or call Amy at the church office. So our opening hymn for today is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. For these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. 
like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we are called children of God, and we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him that we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who creates sin also creates lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed so that he may take away sins, and in him there is no sin. Everyone who abides in him does not sin, Everyone who sins has not seen him or known him. Little children, do not let anyone deceive you. The one doing righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, Jesus said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace. Peace and mercy is yours in the triune God. Amen. Jesus showed his friends his hands and his feet. 
the places where Nails kept his dying body on the cross just days before. Luke doesn't give us very much. Were they still gaping wounds, or had they scarred over? I can't believe that they were whole and unmarred as though nothing had happened, because God is not in the habit of ignoring the terrible and messy parts of life. Jesus knows how hard it is for the disciples to believe that Jesus has been resurrected, that Jesus is risen from the dead, because that just doesn't happen. Jesus knows the disciples' fears and anxieties, and Jesus doesn't dismiss them or scold the disciples for having them. Instead, Jesus gently and firmly puts their wonderings and their fears to rest. Jesus tells his friends to touch him, to feel and see that he's not a ghost, not a spirit without a body. Jesus asks for food, showing that he is a person who can eat. Probably also because he was hungry, because the Last Supper had been a few days before. Stomach filled and fears quieted, Jesus does what he has always done, teaching explaining things to his followers and disciples that they don't quite understand because there is always more behind, beneath, and under the mysteries of faith and the presence of God in our lives. Jesus reminds the people gathered that day that they are witnesses to what has happened and what will happen. These people in this place and this time who have seen the risen Jesus, who have heard his words, seen his miracles, whose hearts have been touched by the truth and love and grace that Jesus shared. These people are now being called out into the world to tell others and to do what Jesus did. We are all witnesses to our own journeys of faith and encounters with God, but we are also witnesses to things we desperately wish we weren't, to accidents, to chemo treatments, to the slow fading away of people we love, to knees pressed on necks and unarmed teenagers with hands up. We are witnesses to things we never asked to be, never wanted to be. We are witnesses to things we desperately want to look away from things that can seem so far away, so removed from most of our own day-to-day -day lives. Some of us wonder what it is we can do. Some of us wish the news wouldn't talk about it all so much. What are we, as beloved children of God, called to do? John, in his letter, gives us a hint. The one doing righteousness is righteous, he writes. To be righteous, to work to bring goodness and justice into the world. God calls us out to do righteousness, to work for the good of the neighbor. Not because it saves us, or gives us extra points to redeem for an extra sparkly crown once we're in heaven, but because this is the work that God is doing in the world in all sorts of ways and all sorts of sizes. We have a God who does not turn away any gift that we have, any gift that we bring, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem to us. After all, Jesus fed 5,000 families with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. It's always been really important to me that Jesus had a body. I need a God who understands the complexity of human life the joys and the pains of living. A God whose feet hurt after a long day of work or walking, who grumbled and has a favorite food. A God who comes close, who is not put off by outward appearances or social classes or how together we have it. A God whose body cried out in pain during the Passion and on the cross. We need a bodily resurrection because we, too, are in body. Jesus doesn't seem to care all that much about the distinctions that we are so quick to make and to rely upon. 
Jesus' body is holy, and so too is each of ours. The resurrection reminds us that all bodies are holy, especially the bodies of those that the world says are less important. Disabled bodies, black and brown bodies, young bodies, old bodies. Easter is a whole season, not just a day. Because we need the whole season of Easter to learn and relearn that the resurrection matters. Because God defeated death on that first Easter morning. Because God has and can and will transform death and sin into new life, into a new creation. Because everything that God has made is precious. And that includes our bodies, these instruments that we have been given and that we have been told over and over again by the world around us are bad or wrong. We are children of God, and we have a body just like God does. And we are called to use all of the gifts God has given us, including our bodies, to bring the freedom of resurrection to the whole world. Thanks be to God. As most of you know, we lost our beloved organist, Elaine Beach, this past week. Um, and so for some special music before we continue on with our service, we have uh, two short songs that Elaine recorded for us to use on our online services. Uh, so we'll play those now as we remember Elaine. Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures, so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Lord, in your mercy, Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and love. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Ralph Avi and Danny Martin. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us, especially Graham Keeney, Daryl Johnson, and Elaine Beach. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to prepare your communion elements. As always, with our drive-in services, the offering will be collected at the end of the service by our wonderful ushers. Let us pray. God of love, you called us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all are welcome. So I invite you to take your wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you.
your grapey liquid, if you have one. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in faith. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.